believe in our God and I believe in what our God can do for us. I believe in those promises. In Romans 8, 28, He promises to work all things for our good, for those who love Him and who are called according to His purpose. I love that promise because no matter the circumstance in my journey, I know if I have those two qualifiers, He's going to carry me through that situation. And all I have to do is put my trust in God. So as we continue to worship today, I want us just to let those words sink in. I believe and I trust in my Lord and Savior.
awesome time of worship. Let's just close our eyes wherever you are. Maybe if you're driving down the road, don't do that. But Be safe. let's pray together, okay? <laughs> Jesus, we love you so much. And Lord, just like that song we just sang, God, we want to trust you. We want to put our faith in you. We want to know you more. We want to know you better. Give us peace and patience while we wait on you when you're doing these things in our lives, God. And Lord, if there's anybody here today who's new to the church, maybe new to you, and they're just checking you out, Lord, I pray that you would increase their trust. Give them faith today. Help them to feel your love and to feel your presence today. And God, we just thank you for this opportunity that we can come together and worship you for who you are. You are great and you are worthy of our praise. And thank you that no matter where we're at, we can come together like this and worship together as a family. We love you, Lord. Thank you for being so good to us. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, that was Trust, one of our Highlands original songs. You can find that on YouTube or anywhere that you listen to music, wherever you stream music, you can find that. And our YouTube channel, we actually have a playlist of all of our Highlands originals that we have put out online for our online gatherings. So you can listen to those. Uh, hopefully that was an encouragement for you today. I know that song has been really impactful for yep. me. Um, as, man, their seasons have been up and down. I think we've all experienced that lately, uh, whether that's with family or loss or sickness or whatever that looks like. Uh, it can be a difficult time and we're just glad that you're with us today. So wherever you're watching from, welcome. We're so glad you're here. And uh, hey, we're in week three of our series called Influencer. And uh, we, I'm so grateful for Pastor Allen and his sense of humor. Um, he is much kinder than he should be and is willing to go along with our creative team antics. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed his YouTube videos. Some people have asked us, hey, is he really yes. starting a YouTube channel? Uh, no, he's no. not. Um, but I mean, we uh, have a YouTube channel. Yeah. You can like and subscribe. <laughs> you can on this video even. Some of you are watching on YouTube right now, but Pastor Allen does not have a YouTube channel currently, though maybe after this week he should. Uh, I can't wait. Brenda, to, Brenda, I, can't, I can't wait to Brenda, see what happens uh, Brenda, this week yeah. on Pastor Allen's ah! uh, fake YouTube show. So, hey, before we get to the message, let's see what Pastor Allen is up to, and we'll see you right after the message. All right, hey everybody, welcome back to Al's YouTube channel. Hey, we've had such a great response. You guys have liked and subscribed, it's been crazy. And I don't know, I think we're on our way to 50,000 subscribers really, really soon. So, uh, we tried to hit all the YouTube stuff, you know, we're doing reviews with the golf gloves. Last week we're doing the DIY. Today we're doing the challenge. And I thought, who better to help me with the challenge then these two guys right here, you know, my two sons, Timmy and Chris. And uh, we, you've probably seen this, but uh, we are, we've spent the money and uh, we bought the two packs of hottest chips in the world. Reason why I have three, cause Chris just sort of sighed here at the last minute. I hate hot stuff. I hate it. I just, I, I hate, I mean, I like hot coffee. That's it. I don't like any hot anything. So it's gonna be bad. And uh, we got, of course, Nurse Brenda to give us uh, the surgical gloves because this stuff's supposed to like actually burn your skin off. And uh, from last week, you know, lavender really helped me with my finger issue. So I got my essential <coughs> lavender oil and I went ahead just for the sake of all you essential oil, I got purification. So that's what I'm gonna need after I take this. So anyway, Carolina Reaper. And scorpion pepper. Scorpion pepper. I don't know what that is. It's one. the hottest pepper on earth. Oh, okay. So you're, you're gonna, gonna have die. a warning on the back. And what does the warning say, Dad? It says, this chip will destroy you. <laughs> Keep out of reach of children. Chris, this could be child abuse, I don't know. So, uh. That's that. And if you're wondering about the calories, uh, it only has 25 calories. I am not worried. So All right, guys, y'all ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> oh, I to do this. Oh, that's the most disgusting <coughs> thing I've ever had. It is hot. <coughs> oh. You guys can keep going. Woo! It's getting hot in here. <coughs> oh. <coughs> need some milk. Are you okay? We need to pray, boys. Oh. It's gonna be the hottest thing we've ever had. <laughs> <coughs> uh, 
Oh. Oh. me the whole thing. Oh my goodness. Four. Oh. Bro, I'm literally crying. <laughs> okay. Oh. Chris went first. I can't out. take it anymore. I can't do this. We don't have any ice cream. We're in trouble. <sighs> oh. I think Craig Barber. I think Craig Barber. Craig Barber likes a challenge. So we challenge Craig Barber. I think him and Steve. Steve Robinson. Steve Robinson would probably eat these chips for lunch. I can't feel my tongue. <coughs> Chris, you've drank a gallon of milk. So how have you? How are you? <coughs> how are you doing? Mm -mm. <coughs> Still not good? Mm-mm. Okay, all right. Drive me to the ER. Well, I would just say, oh. <coughs> it's truly hot. <coughs> Drive me uh, to the ER. You know, again, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you wanna do it, don't forget, like and subscribe, surely. You'd like and subscribe for this one, okay? <coughs> we need you, ring the bell. Well, hey everybody, man, I want to welcome you to Highlands today. Thank you so much, whether you're online, on TV, or in person at one of our locations. Man, you guys are incredible. I appreciate all your encouragement for my YouTube stuff. Just going to tell you, we all have regrets. Eating that chip is definitely a regret. Don't ever do it. Just don't ever do it. My staff has this sick sense of humor that they want to help me make you laugh. So I hope you're laughing in this season of sort of difficulty. We wanted to bring a little humor your way, and uh, we've had a fun time doing it. So we're in this series called Influencer, and we're talking about how God invites us to actually join him to use our influence in helping be his salt and light. And I know uh, hundreds and hundreds, over a thousand of you are on this journey with me through the New Testament. And uh, this past Tuesday, uh, we were reminded as we read Jesus' Sermon on the Mount in the Gospel of Matthew, that we are actually His salt and His light. Look at Matthew chapter 5. Notice what Jesus said. You, a follower of Jesus, you're the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. So we can know that this is actually God's will for our life, right? To be His saltiness, His God flavor in the world in which we live, and His light to the world uh, in this time of doom and gloom. Uh, it's so exciting that God says we have the opportunity to be influencers on His behalf. Uh, a few months ago, uh, I remember receiving a special invitation in the mail. You can tell we all get many invitations. I knew this one was a special one, the way it was written, the envelope it was in. And uh, it was inviting me to join Dr. David Olive, president of Bluefield University, to attend their 100-year anniversary as a Christian educational institution. And of course, many of you know that Highlands partners with Bluefield University in two ways. Uh, we have a Highlands Fellowship campus that meets on the university campus in the chapel. It's been an ongoing uh, great campus for us for several years, and we've met so many wonderful people in Bluefield. We're so happy to be there. And then just a few years ago when we launched our new vision, uh, we also partnered with the university in a second way, and they allowed us to open up our own HF College. And HF College is actually an opportunity for all of our local people who have been called by God to go into ministry to get accredited education at a very reduced cost. We've had our first graduates. We're working on our master's degree program, Cameron Lee, uh, down at our NCC campus overseas this far. It's done a great job. And hey, if you feel like you want to credit education, you want to go into full-time ministry, you ought to check out HF College. Just an, an incredible deal. So Bluefield University has been a tremendous partner for us in every way. When I got the invitation, I decided that I would respond to that invitation, that I would go and I would attend. 
and I would celebrate with them all that God has done in that university uh, over the past 100 years. And uh, it was great, man, all the uh, news was there, a lot of the alumni and current students, and we just had a great day celebrating and giving glory to God. You know, we get invited to things all the time. Uh, we get many, many invitations. So today, what I want to talk to you about is what I would say is this, the greatest invitation you can ever receive. You think, wow, what, what is that? Well, here it is. That God actually invites me and he invites you to be his agent. The scripture uses the word ambassador. I felt like that was a little fancy for us. But we're called to be God's agent to use our influence to help other people have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Now that's an incredible invitation that God actually offers us and asks us to partner with him in. It's true. God invites me, he invites you to become involved with him in his work. Now, I don't know what that does for you, but for me, uh, this is very exciting, right? To be invited by the God of the universe to actually be involved in his work here on this planet. That we are his salt and his light as we influence others in our sphere of influence toward him. So what exactly is God inviting us to do? It's a great question, right? Well, we know that God has always been working from day one to redeem a lost and broken world to himself. As soon as Genesis 3 says sin entered into the human race, we know that was not God's uh, intended plan for that. And from that day forward, God has been working on how does he redeem a broken and lost world to himself. And the Bible says that we have all, every one of us, we've all turned our backs on God. <laughs> we've sinned. Uh, truth is, we're all sinners. We've all gone astray. And God's plan from the very beginning was to bring us back to him. So God sent his son into the world. And we know that Jesus actually died on a cross so that we could be forgiven for our sins and we could be made right with God. And once we decide to invite Jesus Christ into our lives and find forgiveness, then what does God do? Well, once we're in his family, then God invites us, okay, to be a part of his plan to rescue a broken and lost world to himself. And notice, uh, this is what Jesus says to his disciples, his last words. Uh, we call this the Great Commission, Matthew 28, look at verse 18. Jesus says this, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, and this is to us, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And then he says, teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this. He, he, he gives us this promise. I am with you always even to the end of the age, or basically till I come back and receive you unto myself. He's going to be with us every day. Again, the great commission of Jesus. So here he invites us to be a part of his plan, to be able to take his good news to our local community first, to our region, to our nation, to North America, and literally he wants us to be a participant in taking the good news to the entire world world. And every day, God invites you to join him to influence others because our God is at work in the world. So here's the, here's the deal. We have a choice to make, don't we? Will I actually accept God's invitation and join him and use the influence he's given me to help other people come to know Jesus? Will I actually do that? Because here's what the data, who is our friend, tells us. That over 95% of us have said no to that, all right? As followers of Jesus, 95%, uh, this is uh, what Barna has recently said, uh, have, uh, you're a child of God, you're in his family, and yet you have never, all right? You've never used your influence, 
You've never invited, you've never shared the gospel with anyone else in your entire life since you've been a believer. Now that breaks my heart, right? And I think that breaks the heart of God. So, so you have to decide. We know this is God's plan. And you've got to decide, all right, if I'm a child of his, am I going to, am I going to be one of the 5% that actually says, you know what, God, I'm going to join you. I, I'm going to help other people come to know you. I'm going to use my influence for that cause. And if I say yes, all right, then how do I use my influence to join God in his work? Now, uh, what I wanted to do is we start out trying to just help you understand you are an influencer. You do have an influence in week one. Last week, we looked at sort of the theological aspect of what Paul tells Timothy, how to do it. You're to do it in the way you live and your conduct, your integrity, your speech, all these kinds of things. Today, I want to get really, really practical. And I want to give you some practicalities. If you decide, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to join God. I believe this is what God wants me to do. I'm not perfect. You don't have to be perfect to do this. I'm going to go out. I'm going to start using my influence for Jesus. How do you do it? All right, here's step number one. All right, it's really simple. Here's number one. I watch where God is working around me. This is really practical, right? God is working around us all the time. We're just too busy with our own lives to take notice in what he's doing. Now, uh, let me give you an example. And uh, I, I think I may have shared something like this uh, several years ago uh, with you. But uh, what we've tried to do, and we've tried to plan this with five kids... Uh, I put a lot of miles on a vehicle, so when they get to 16 and they get their permit, we've wanted to give them a used vehicle. We're not the kind of parents going to buy them a new one. Uh, uh, all, every vehicle we've given to the kids, uh, they have about 100,000 miles on them. So we want, that's their vehicle till they get through college or get their first job. And uh, we, Timmy just turned 16 a couple of years ago, so I knew that uh, I was going to hand him over my truck. had about 100,000 miles on it, and I was looking for another one. And uh, as I began to look for another one, you know, a few months before I knew the turnover was going to happen, I remember driving by a dealership, and you know how they put those uh, the, the store special vehicles out front, almost right on the road where you drive by and you look at it. And I remember seeing this silver truck, and I was thinking, wow. That, you know, I've never seen a color quite like that, never seen a design quite like that. I just hadn't seen a truck like that very often at all, you know, if ever. And uh, so I decided, I think that's the truck I'm going to go after. And so, you know, I got everything together. I got approval from the finance committee. That, that's Brenda, by the way. And uh, I went and we made the deal and, and I bought that truck. Now, no lie, okay? I'm thinking, this is a man's truck. Man, it, it looks awesome. Uh, there's, I haven't seen any trucks like that before. It's going to be, you know, I'm finally going to get a truck that nobody really has. As I am driving the truck off the lot, first time, there is an exact identical truck that passes right in front of me. True story. As I'm driving home, I pass two more identical trucks, same color, same make, same model, everything else on Main Street in Abingdon, just like mine. And catch this. Two weeks later, I noticed that there is one identical truck, just like the one I bought, in the same daggone neighborhood that I live in. And guess what? All three of those silver trucks driven by ladies. So it's, I think I bought a ladies truck, you know? <laughs> anyway, uh, it's sort of a sense of humor. Brenda got a kick out of it. I started seeing that same truck all over the place. Ha have you ever experienced something like that in your life? Like once you start paying attention to something, uh, you sort of start seeing it everywhere? Well, this is exactly how it is when we discover that God's actually working all around us and we've just been simply too busy or self-absorbed to see Him at work in our life. God's at work around you. He truly is. He's already working. We just have to come to the place where we tune our minds into what He's already doing and when we do see where he's working around us, that is our invitation from him to join him, to use our influence and become a part of his team in redeeming a lost and broken world to himself. It's an exciting invitation. And this is exactly how Jesus worked in his own ministry, right? Let's go back, look in John 5, and notice what Jesus says. He says this in verse 17. My father 
is always working, and so am I. I tell you the truth, the Son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the Father doing. And whatever the Father does, the Son also does. For the Father loves the Son and shows him everything he is doing. So what do we learn from this passage? Well, in this passage, we see that God is always working. And Jesus is only doing, all right? Jesus is not out there doing a thousand things. Jesus is only doing what he sees his Father doing. And it's the same for us. God wants to show you where he is working around you in your sphere of influence. And that's God's invitation for us to link up with him and begin to use the influence that God has given us to point others toward him. This is how this works. And here's the coolest part. This is a personal invitation to you. All right? It's a personal invitation. You see how God does this. All right? Not everybody's going to be invited to this specific work. First of all, you've got to be a follower of Jesus. And then you personally, God has crafted a plan for you to join him. And so often we're just too busy to see his invitation. We ignore it. We just say, no, that's not the Lord working. And we pass it by. Now, maybe, just maybe, God is actually nudging you to serve in some capacity. And you know this, you know, and and you know this. Maybe he wants you to talk to that friend at work who's going through a difficult time. Uh, Maybe the Holy Spirit is nudging you to talk to that person who's going through a divorce and they feel like their hope is gone. Uh, Maybe the Holy Spirit's nudging you to, uh, you know, there's so many sick people in our culture right now, to be a friend in a time of sickness and to maybe make a food delivery or somehow use your influence in that person's life. Hey, maybe God's nudging you uh, to to be a part of our worship team here at Highlands. Uh, Now, God's not nudging me for that, all right? They're never going to let me on a worship team, even if I wanted to be. They ain't going to let me. I don't have that gift. That's not how it is. But he specifically may be nudging you to try out for that. Maybe God's nudging some of you to say, you know what, what can I do for our church to reach more people? Well, you know, one of the things you could do, you could help us open children's ministry at our locations in Bristol and Abingdon at the 930 service. We need more volunteers to do that. Maybe the Holy Spirit's nudging you to say, I don't want to continue to be a consumer I think God's gifted me to be able to help or to invite or to be an agent, an ambassador for God, join him in his work, and it's a specific invitation for you. Now, what I want you to see is that these are not accidents. (laughs) These are not coincidences. Rather, When the Holy Spirit nudges you and you sense this drive toward this or this calling toward this, these are God's invitations. This is how God wants to work with you. And here's what I want you to know. When God initiates that process in your heart, he is already working in the lives of those around you. And here's what God is doing. He is choosing you specifically so that you can help draw them closer to him. So I want to give you a very practical step in not missing this. Just pray. You know, one of the things we're learning as we read through the New Testament is the importance of prayer. Just pray a prayer like, God, I don't want to miss where you're working in my sphere of influence. Lord, show me where you're already at work and where you want me to join you. I don't want to miss this, God. And then just get ready, all right? I promise, just, just get ready and just watch. And uh, your life's about to change when you sincerely pray a prayer. God, I want to see where you're at work around me. I'm willing to join you in it to redeem a broken and lost world to yourself. Here is the second practical step on how to be an influencer and join God's team. I allow God to use my unique gifts... For his work. Now, look, let's look at this in Scripture. This is what Peter says to us in 1 Peter chapter 4. Look at verse 10. Notice what he says. He says, God has given each of you, this is to followers of Jesus, all right? This is not to those of you who are not Jesus followers yet. He's given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts, right? God, 
He's created us all unique. Uh, we all have unique spiritual gifts that God's given us. And then he tells us, use them well to serve yourself. Is that what the scripture says? <laughs> no, that's what it says. Use them well to serve one another. So here's the truth. If we're going to have influence to join God, somehow in our mindset we have to shift our thinking from using these unique spiritual gifts that God's given us to serve ourselves and understand that he wants us to use those gifts he's given us to serve others. You see, God's prepared and shaped you for the invitation that he's sending you on. And you were designed by God to join him in the work that he invites you to. I love what Paul tells Timothy here in 1 Timothy 4, look at verse 14. He says, Timothy, do not neglect the spiritual gift that is in you. And the Lord would say the same thing to you today. You, if you're a follower of Jesus, you've given your heart to Jesus, you're a Christian, you have a gift that God's given you. And that is the unique gift that when God invites you to join him in his work, that he's going to use. Because all of us don't have the same gift. So since we all have these unique gifts, we need each other. And in the church, hey, we definitely need each other. We don't have to agree on everything. I mean, my goodness, I don't agree with Brenda on everything. I still love her. We still got a great marriage. I don't agree with the kids on everything. But we still got a great family. And in the church, we don't have to agree on everything. But I'll tell you, we need each other. And we need to love each other. And we need to be for each other. And this needs to be a place of encouragement. That's what home is, right? Holland's is home. We're all on the same team. Each one of us has to decide to use our unique gifts to accomplish God's vision for our local church. And this is what you guys have done so well over the past few years. You have decided that you're going to use your gifts and you've gone out and you serve people in so many different capacities. Over 80,000 people. Think about that, guys. That you have used your gifts that God has given you to help redeem and influence a broken and lost world to understand the love of Jesus Christ. I just want to say thank you. It's been amazing to watch and see. I, I love the example of the early church in Acts, right? I think we all want to be a part of a church like this. They were all together. They had the same vision. It was clear. And the scripture says when they went out with their united vision, they influenced their community. And this is how they did it. Look, look at the scripture. It says every day, every day, they continued to meet together in temple courts. This is what we're asking you to do as we read through the New Testament. Every day, you've got some scripture to read. They broke bread in their homes. They ate together. It's what we do in small groups with glad and sincere hearts. They praised God. They enjoyed the favor of all the people. And notice what God did. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. You know what the scripture says about that first church? They literally turned their community upside down for the love of Jesus Christ. Man, that's what we want. We want to be a part of a supernatural church. Here's the third practical way to join God. I give my resources for God's vision. Now, let's be honest. God has blessed all of us with material resources and why do we have these? Well, he wants us to provide for our families, right? We go out and we work so we can put food on the table. We can give shelter. We can buy clothing. He wants us to take care of our families. He does that. And he also gives us resources so that we can enjoy life. I mean, part of the reward of work is so you can do things with your resources. You can enjoy it. You can take a great vacation. There's nothing wrong with that. God wants you to do these kinds of things. But he also is very clear in Scripture that he gives us financial blessings for a greater purpose. That we can invest in what God is already doing in the world around us. So when you come to a service at Highlands, those of you on TV and online, every week you know that we receive, we don't take, all right? We receive an offering from all of you and always invite you, hey, make a meaningful gift. Here's why. Because your giving changes lives for Jesus Christ. It does. Your giving allows us to fulfill our vision where we are joining God. And we've decided that we, we believe that God wants our church to make a difference in thousands of lives locally, regionally, around the world. This is what Jesus says in Acts 1.8. He says, but you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. 
And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, <clears throat> in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, to the ends of the earth. These are our marching orders as a child of God and as a church filled with believers in Jesus. This is what he wants us to do. And your giving literally helps transform lives here at home and literally around the world. So God is trying to teach us this, right? Don't just invest in things that are here today and gone tomorrow. Rather, he wants us to use some of what he's given us. He's given it all to us. He wants us to invest a portion of that back in things that are going to last for all eternity. What's that? It's people, all right? Uh, we need to be investing a portion of what God's given us back into people because they're going to last for all eternity. Now, you know this. There's really only two kinds of people in our world. There are givers and they're takers. And here's what I want you to know. You know which one you are. And also, everybody in your sphere of influence knows whether you're a giver or a taker. Uh, you can't be a smoozer, a taker, and think that nobody really knows. Because they all know. They all know. So I want to encourage you, be a giver. Be like our Lord. Which one are you? It's simply really a matter of obedience. This is how Paul describes it in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. That's what he says. He says, remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And here's, hey, if, if you're going to give to our church, you're going to give to our vision, here's what you need to have. This, this is the attitude you need to have, all right? Or not, you need to keep it, all right? Because we don't want it. You must each decide in your heart how much you're going to give. And this is what he says. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. We never pressure you. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. In other words, if you can't give out of the abundance that God has given you back to his work to redeem a lost and broken world, then you have a, you have a heart problem, right? And God will generously provide when you give generously and cheerfully all you need. And then you'll always have everything you need plenty left over to share with others. Giving back to God has never been a money issue for us. It's a hard issue. It's a hard issue. And I want to challenge you to have a heart like God, be a giver, and sow generously. Here's the fourth final way I think you can join God. I just obey His invitation. I obey God's invitation. If I'm going to join God, if I'm going to use my influence... Then when God invites me, all right, I'm going to obey God's invitation. Let me ask you a question. Is there something that you know that God has actually asked you to join him in, but you delay it? You, you, you just keep delaying it. You keep putting him off. You know down deep he wants you to move out and he wants you to join him in. Maybe it's in your career. Um, maybe it's again by making a simple invite to somebody. Uh, you know that God wants to use you. And uh, most of us would look at it like this. Well, now, God, uh, I want you to bless me, uh, but I, I really don't want you to use me. I, I just want you to bless me instead of using me. <laughs> that's, how, that's sort of what we want, right? But God says, well, that's, that's not how it work. I, I want to use you. And that's been God's plan from the beginning. So listen, if you want to know God's will for your life, then just obey him when he invites you to join him in his work. It's pretty simple, actually. When God invites and we obey him and join him, it basically means that we love him. And we're all called to love him. This is what he says in John 14. Notice what Jesus says in verse 21. Jesus says this. Those who accept my commandments and obey them, that's what we're talking about, are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them, and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. So if God is inviting you to do something, and you're scared to death, because most of the time we are, right? Just know this, where God guides you, He will always provide. You don't have to be afraid of saying yes. If God invites you to join Him, it will always be for your best, God's glory. He's always at work around you. 
Do you know where God's inviting you to use your influence to join him today? I mean, you probably do. You probably have had these faults before. You sort of know that God's sort of calling you out. Maybe it is in a job or a career. Maybe it's in a relationship. And you know that you need to move out of that relationship because it's hindering your walk with God. Or maybe there's a relationship that he's encouraging you to pursue. You know, I don't know what it is for you. Uh, I, I struggle enough knowing what it is for me, right? I'm not saying I got this down. But I'm just saying I want to join God when he invites me to join him. He is at work around us. He is wanting to use us. His plan from the beginning is to use us. Those who are redeemed, who have saved, we've accepted Jesus. To use our influence to draw those who need the salt of Jesus and the light of Jesus to bring hope in the midst of darkness. You can be on his team today. I encourage you to do it if you want excitement and fulfillment in your life. Now, here's how I want to close. His first invitation to join him is always at salvation, right? That's the beginning. And it seems like every week uh, the Holy Spirit brings somebody to a service online or to a service on TV or one of our locations, and you, you've never accepted that first invitation of giving your heart and life to Jesus. I want to give you an opportunity to do that today because I think it's so important. That's the greatest decision you'll ever make. And again, it's the journey of beginning to be a disciple of Jesus. So would you pray with me? Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much that you have gone before us. You sent your only son to die on our behalf to redeem us and forgive us of our mistakes and cleanse us from our sin. And God, my hope is that somebody has been invited to watch this service. And yet, you know who I'm talking, you, you know if, if I'm talking to you, you know exactly who you are. And you have never accepted the invitation to ask Jesus Christ to come into your life, forgive your sin, and you find a home in Jesus. If that's you, I want you to pray this prayer with me today. Just say, Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. I've made mistakes. I don't understand why you would die for me on a cross. But today I humbly surrender my life to you, Jesus. I've got to ask you to save me. And if you just prayed that prayer right now online, I want you to hit that little raised hand button. Let us know we're praying for you. If you're in an in-person location, grab somebody on your way out today. Tell them you made that decision. If you're on TV, man, email us and let us know. That's the first and greatest invitation. And then once you're a follower of Jesus, the greatest invitation becomes, I will join you, God, in the work that you have for me to do. And I pray, just as we review a little bit, God, help me to look around me at where you're working. You've given me a unique gift, and may I use that to influence others. God, I pray that you might help me to see where you're at work. And Lord, help me to go out and love you and love others and join you in this awesome privilege of being on Team Jesus. <laughs> and as we work together, may you use me to draw others to a saving knowledge and to grow, to become a mature disciple who loves and honors Jesus in every way. It's truly a matter of obedience. May we obey you today. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, the ultimate invitation is to give your life to Jesus. If you just made that decision, woohoo, party in heaven. We want to party with you. We want to celebrate. It is the best decision you can ever make in your life. Yeah. So if you're watching online, click the Surrender My Life to Jesus button. If you're watching anywhere else, just go to the hub and let us know about that decision. We want to reach out to you. We want to answer any questions. We want to give you some tools to help you grow in your relationship with Jesus. This is the That's beginning right. of an awesome journey, and we want to help you. That's right. And hey, the hub is a great resource. Maybe there's another step that you need to take today. Uh, maybe that looks like you signing up to get baptized. Hey, we've had people from our online and TV audience come
come and get baptized out of campus. Tim was able to baptize someone hey, just Tina. a couple months ago. Uh-huh. Yeah, amazing. Maybe that's you. I, maybe there's another step that you want to take. Uh, it's, the Hub's also a great place for you to participate with us in generosity. Pastor Allen shared about that today, uh, about you know using what we have to influence others. And here at Highlands, we're joining God to make a difference in our community and in our world. I hope that you've seen over our Difference Maker Weekend and our Christmas series and everything that God is doing here, uh, that when you partner with us in generosity, it is making a difference in the lives of thousands and thousands of people locally and literally around the world. And every time I hear about those stories, I just get like so overwhelmed yeah, with just amazing. excitement and joy that I get to be a part of that. The Hub's a great place for you to do that. And the Hub's a great place for you to sign up for our 90 day through the New Testament study. Yes. Tim, how's it going? Man, it is incredible. We've got like over 1,100 people, I believe, have signed up. Wow. And it's so awesome to think about we as a church are engaging together every single day with Jesus and His Word, yeah. and we're learning about the same thing, we're reading the same thing, God is speaking to each of us, and the podcast, man, the Bible Recap Podcast is incredible. Okay. Please, 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 if you're reading the Bible anywhere else, make sure you go to the website and listen to the podcast at the bottom because Tara Lee does an amazing job yeah. explaining and going deep into what we've read that day, and it's, it's life-changing. So, hey. It's not too late. That's right. Hey, Go to the hub. Whatever day you're watching this, you can still sign up. And here's the cool thing. If you sign up today, it's like, oh, but I've missed a couple weeks. Not a problem. Because you're going to get an email today with information about today's uh, reading. And then tomorrow you're going to get an email or text. And then every day until we finish this series. And stick with us. We're going all the way up to Palm Sunday. So you have plenty of time to be a part of this 90-day reading. Um, it's been encouraging. I love it. You can actually comment on our post too, which is so, it's just so cool yeah, to I see people from comments. our church commenting and you can, you can reply to their comments and uh, it's cool to have our own little just kind of space that yeah. we can connect each day. So be a part of that. Take a step, go to the hub, whatever that looks like. And hey, if you need something, if you need someone to talk to, please reach out to us. Uh, it's easy to find us online or reach out on our church page. We have a prayer page that you can, can share a request. If there's something that we can do for you this week, please let us know. We'd love to stay engaged and stay a part of this conversation. Um, Hey, thank you so much for being a part of this digital gathering today. We'll see you next time. Bye.